So about a year and a half ago, we started this school series and it was supposed to be a one-off video just like all other comedy sketches. The first video got over 30 million views. So we just started making more school themed videos and each video is a story on its own which is part of a bigger story. So we've done quite a few episodes since then and I have to say, we sort of come up with our own T1, T5 universe kind of thing and it's pretty fun to do. So I'm the writer for all the videos. I produce it, direct it, and I act in it, which is really fun and all, but it's really difficult to concentrate, especially during the set, because there's just so much going on. There's the directing, making sure everyone knows what to do, and then there's focusing on yourself as well, making sure that you act properly or remember your lines, so yeah. But it's fun. I'm Amanda, and I play Madam Subing, the fiercest teacher class T1, T5 has ever seen. For now. And in the series, I'm also pregnant. So, in case you're wondering how I get pregnant, this is. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. Are we okay? Yeah, yeah. I think it's good. Looks okay? good, looks, oh, looks good. Uh, yeah, okay, just, let's just forgo the tape. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting kind of ridiculous because I've been pregnant for like a year now. Yes, Madam Su Bing is still pregnant after over a year, and it is something that the audiences have noticed. I don't know exactly why, but Bossman probably has a plan for that. I think the question everyone should be asking is. Is she really pregnant? Could it be fake? I think there's something that I want to build on here, but not yet. So I think in the meantime, she'll still be pregnant. So we hit 3 million subscribers some time ago. And if you noticed in our video, you'd actually see some thank you for 3 million signs. You know, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Hi, my name is Hakim. I'm the main videographer and editor for Gen House channel. From the moment we arrive on set, Every team has their own different roles. So the girls would prepare the uniform, the sets, and also the food. And on the other hand, the guys would actually handle all the technical stuff like camera setup, tables arrangement, lights. While Jen Hao, he would be at the site just briefing all the talents on their script. Hi guys, so I'm Daniel Ron. I've been working with Jen Hao for about six years now. The first one to sign in the company and being behind the scenes and in front of the scenes is two different worlds. Like. What happens in front of the scene is all rainbows and cakes and ponies and all bright, bright and colourful. But behind the scene is actually a huge tsunami. Behind the scenes, even if you're not in the scene, it's just chaos. You have people shifting tables, you have people putting light stands, and then after that, it just flips everything around. And then tables are on the other side now, lights are now on the other side. Just come here and wing it. It's very <laughs> exciting. <laughs> so, until now, you still don't know what you're doing? I don't know. I only know I'm the very classy mother, as <laughs> usual. <laughs> Yeah, most of the times I don't tell the actors and actresses what we are actually doing. I just surprise them with the script right away on the day of the shoot. And uh, I really love seeing everyone's reaction when they receive the script because sometimes there's really some crazy things going on there. But that's not my intention. It's mainly because the ideas only come to my head like the day before filming. But to be fair, I know exactly how I want everything to play out in my head. It's just, it's easier to explain it on set rather than sending the script through email. I think it's easier to explain the motion, the action, the sequence of everything. And it's easier to visualize, but yeah, mainly because it comes to me the night before. And yeah, everyone is so professional about it. Everyone is so sporting. They can rem remember their script like on the spot, which is insane. Even I can't do that. And it's just really great people to work with. And I think it's really fun. It may get tiring during the shoot, but at the end of the day, when it's a wrap, bam, you just feel like, ah, oh, it's so relieved and you're just so happy that it's over. But at the same time, it's so fulfilling. So good, so good. Nice. Yeah. How are you? Practicing. Practicing your lines? So, what interesting scenes are there today? I can't tell you. You have to watch to find out. Oh, <laughs> choosing her uniform size. Hello, gorgeous. How are you? Over here, we have NOC joining us for today. Hi. Why you keep breaking Debbie's heart? Why? Do you know everybody hates you because of that now? <laughs> I think Ben has been a pretty mean character for some time now, and. Uh, I kind of feel bad because 
there's quite a lot of anger in the comments, a lot of uh, r real anger towards Ben and I feel bad because he's actually a really nice guy in person. It's sort of my fault as well. But yeah, there's definitely a character arc for Ben. It's just we're taking our time with it because we don't want to rush straight into it. But yeah. So, my name is Vincent and I actually play the role as Vincent. And a lot of you seem to think that I'm actually mean in real life too, like the videos. But I'm not. I'm like the nicest guy ever. And sometimes we don't even like we go through the script. Like I tend to just like go off the script. Like the, sli the line says, Vincent walks to the room. I don't walk to the room, I crawl to the room. Yeah, Vincent does a lot of extra things. Like way extra. Like when, whenever the scene ends, somehow he'll drag it on and do his own thing. Which is totally unnecessary but really cool and I think I can really feed off his energy. That's why in many scenes, you'll see me and Vincent together is because um, we can bounce off each other's energy and I think we have really good chemistry together. Am I in this scene no? Huh? Am I in no. this scene? No. Yeah. I'm too cool for recess. So, um, Vicky just cried. Um, not too sure why. I made girls cry. Vincent, Vincent made her cry by tearing her paper. Really is it really so sad? The papers are right here, by the way. Is it really so sad? I guess my favourite thing about being on set is that I get to see the bloopers that happen. So naturally, when we act out anything, there's going to be people making mistakes, myself included. And we react in the funniest way possible, especially Renny Siang or Ridwan. His bloopers are the best because they are so candid yet they are so true to his character at the same time. It just makes all of us laugh. And as an actor on set, you kind of have to hold it in as much as you can until they all cut. And the minute that they all cut, everybody just go It's great. There's a lot of strange things that we do sometimes in the video, like faking a basketball court. Uh, there was a scene where we just got two people standing in front playing basketball. Not exactly necessary, but I think it's funny how small details like these can really enhance the atmosphere of the video to make it more wholesome and really just enhance the school atmosphere. I do think it's necessary. So the thing I really enjoy about making these videos are that it's real, it's relatable and we cover a lot of themes and problems that students actually do face in real life but there's also a certain amount of craziness that's somehow been acceptable with our audience which is really strange because we'll just do the craziest thing and it's just normal to most of the audiences. Like in a recent video, we of course had the Avengers Doctor Strange portal thing and I mean we've been doing this for many years. Since years ago we did the elephant, the tiger, but it's just really funny to me how it's become so normal now and I think it's sort of uh, our style now, yeah. So Director Tan, what are we filming today? We're filming our project. Wow. The students are supposed to make their own Airplanes, the airplane that can fly the flight. Hey, you know what? In fact, you are the teacher. Why don't you tell us what the group project is? So basically, um, the assignment is thirty percent of their entire year's grade. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So this project is actually very important, and they have to make a paper plane that can fly the photos. All right. Hello, I'm Echo, and I'm part of the video production crew, and also do some props. So this is the plane that I built recently for the Class T1, T5 group project video. Guys, I don't think we should cheat anymore. I have these and I think we can build a plane. What did you say bro? I can't afford to fail. I can only afford to cheat. So two days before the shoot, Tin Hao and Denise were discussing about what the school project should be like. And they were just bouncing ideas and suddenly Tin Hao and Denise came up um, on, on the topic of how to build a plane. And then Tin Hao turned to me and asked me to stop whatever I'm doing. He asked me to build a plane. I just had one day to build it. It was pretty tough and challenging. <laughs> so I did some research on what plane would be suitable for the class project. And after thinking, I decided to go with an F-22. And I let Tenau know and Tenau approved it. So on the day of the shoot, the plane haven't been painted yet. 
and I just took some um, spray paint, a grey colour spray paint and just spray painted it within like 30 minutes and let it dry. And after that, there we go, we have the plane. Can you please explain the plane? Oh, hi, this is the F-22 plane. Yeah! Uh, what is it made of? It's made of styrofoam. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. So there are people who get the impression that our videos are easy to make because it's listicles, but the list is just a format. There's a lot of planning involved, a lot of people involved, and of course, a lot of details that we actually have to think about. Stuff like who sits where, who sits together, you know, these are all things that we decide beforehand, and of course, the structure of the tables, there's a lot to think about. Like, would it be four rows of tables on each side, or would it be like an exam style where every table is individually put, or would it be like our latest video, the group projects, where we have four big tables catered to four different groups. To think of the flow of the story, the development of the characters and the structure of the video is to me the most important part when coming up with the whole script. It used to be easier, you know, when we had like types of people during the haze and actors could be interchangeable, we didn't really have characters, but now everyone has their own character. For example, if I wanted to have somebody be a bully, I wouldn't be able to get Kevin or Ridwan because it would be uncharacteristic of them and it would ruin the whole character development that we've built. So it's a lot to think about when coming up with the script. But this way, everyone has a certain character to play and that the audience can really connect to. So I do think that in the end, it is worth it because it really helps to build a long story over time. There are times where we have so many scenes and there's so many things going on on set that we really need all hands on deck. Myself included, you know, I try my best to help out as much as I can so that our shoots will be more efficient and everybody can go back home on time because it's just crazy on set. I genuinely enjoy being part of the crew because, you know, it makes me feel cool. <laughs> Hello Team NOC, what are y'all doing? So we are collecting uh, mosquitoes. Yes, this is our mosquito <laughs> formation. Huh? Yeah, 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 we're watching. <laughs> What's happening? I'm so confused. Very skin. So how how is shoot so far? It's hot. It's hot. That's why I'm sitting here because there's AC leaking in from the lecture room. It's the only place that has such good AC. But how many more scenes left to go? Are you assuming my Four scenes left. Four scenes. So we're on time. Um, if we hurry up, then maybe yes. It may be listicle, okay? Just mind you, we try to shoot that whole video in a day. But the prepping for each scene will take us quite a long time because we have a lot of equipment. We have lights, camera stands, we have monitors, we have cables and cables will always get spoiled every 10 minutes. You think it's so simple, okay, all we have to do is just move here and in the middle of moving from one place to another, two cables break, one stand falls. It just becomes tiring but it's fun and rewarding at the same time. In the midst of all this rush, even our lunch time is rushed. We don't get to sit down, talk and eat. How is it? No, we are toilet, drink water, done. Utensils up and... Wait and... Alright, time has begun. 10 minutes. Okay. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Chew your food, Kevin, chew your food. If you're not chewing, you're not eating. I'm just kidding, guys. Oh, you need more chicken. <laughs> what is this? It's called needing um, our energy. And then we feed ourselves to act better. This episode is about type of students to success. So it's like the perfect prop. What are you filming? We are filming a very important subject. It's called a speaker. Are you ready? Yes! Okay, and action. All right, we're done. Beautiful take, speaker. Well done. Thank you. Appreciate it. After times when you're on set, you pretty much don't know how Tian Hao envisions it. Because, you know, we are obviously not him, right? He will slowly explain to us, scene by scene, exactly how he wants it. Sometimes, I just stand there and I just... Okay. Okay. When it's actually being filmed, you kind of don't know how it's going to be like, how the scene is going to play like in the entire video. But then when you watch it, you're like, oh, okay. All these little things that he does, it somehow affects how the video ends or how the video concludes. And a lot of times, we don't really understand our part until we see the entire video. When it comes to editing, the part that makes this video special is that me and Jen Hao, we kind of have this kind of like special telepathy synchronization that we have. Whenever Jen Hao describes to me about a scene, it always plays out in my head. I kind of have a visualization on what he wants. So I'm able to put what is on paper onto video, and that is where the magic happens. When it comes to editing, 
there's actually a lot of things that people don't normally see. And it's all about all these tiniest details that actually make the video wholesome. Like for example, music, sound effects, some of them are pretty necessary, while some of them are just quite unnecessary, but it, it kind of like enhances the whole video in general. Then there's the visual effects of the video, where we add on special effects onto a video. There was this one time where we actually put a little bit too much light on the door, and we actually have to cover it up with a Class T1 T5 logo, which took quite a while because we have to mask out like the talents one by one but at the end of the day it looks great but the main reason why we add on the special effects is because we want to enhance the viewing pleasure of our audience like for example adding on a palm tree or a bush that's not actually there just to make one piece of art visually at the end of the day it feels great to have an idea come into full circle to create a video that has millions of views and you know, I just want to say that I'm super glad to be part of this team and everyone knows their roles and it makes doing these videos a lot easier. So this is how we take a thumbnail. That's how a thumbnail is done boys. Hi, I'm Kevin. Um, so aside from appearing in Class T1, T5, I am also actually part of the production crew. Uh, I mainly focus on assisting Dan and Hakim, carrying the tripod for him. And also, especially for me, I take the BTS photos for everyone. We're touching up Kevin's hair for the shoot tomorrow. It all started just because I told Tian Hao that, hey, maybe I want to cut my hair for his proposal just to look nice and neat. And then I told him like, you know, you could just use my hair as a prop for one time. And then it happened again and again. Oh, you look so good, Kevin. This haircut's gonna get us 10 million. <laughs> In this video, um, Jasmine, Vicky, and Sherilyn had to do my makeup for the scene that I actually trespassed into the girl's toilet. Any, anyone that's as pretty as him, as beautiful as him. I know, right? 109! Action! Get ready to fight, ready? Then, yeah. Okay, then you're about to just clash and you're just get ready to beat him up. Hey. Isn't this one of the losers on T1, T5? Ah! <laughs> Ridon, you do like a slight... Read, read, read. Look here. You do like a slight move back before you say, stay away or call, tell my friends. Awesome. Okay? <laughs> okay, where we go, you all just get to your seats, okay? Okay, let's go, let's go. Final scene of the day. Yes. Yes. One, two, three, and action. Okay, do it one more time. Okay. Uh, as quirky as my character is, I'm very glad and very thankful that I get to play Madden Sibling my way. And never in my entire life will I ever think that I would be a pregnant teacher. I'm very glad that I get to portray this character my way. And you know what? I can't wait for you guys to find out what's going to happen next. So what you can expect from the future of Class T1, T5 is that... Actually, I don't know. How is the script writer? You don't just have to depend on him. But you know, we've seen a lot of comments about classmates during lectures and all this stuff in universities. So definitely, there is a growing phase in the students of Class T1, T5. So you'll definitely see more maturity. No, not mature content. You'll see the character grow in maturity um, along the years and along the videos. So, you have to stay tuned to find out because you wouldn't want to stop watching now, would you? What if Madam Subin suddenly decides to give birth next episode? So throughout my years of doing YouTube, I think the school series are one of my favourite projects. Everyone is just really professional, the crew, the talents, they are just such a joy to work with. And everyone is really sporting. The atmosphere is so lovely and every time I come up with the craziest ideas, everyone's just so ready to do it and I think that's what makes the video so good. So the last time we saw this character, Madam Subing, she was fired from the academy for taking the blame for some students cheating to save them. And this story picks up from that moment onwards and goes a little more in depth to discover who this character, Madam Subing, really is. Oh, bye Madam Subing. Madam Subing has always been seen as a very fierce figure throughout all the episodes in the Titan Academy. And 
In this short film, when you rip off her title, you rip off her ego, what you really get is someone who's really just trying and problems are coming to her from all different angles and for the very first time, we see Madame Subbing vulnerable. Madame Subbing is a teacher. Well, she was a teacher and now she's unemployed so she's trying to figure out who she is without the status of being a teacher. Well, Madame Subbing has always been known as this very egoistic teacher. She's very proud of her status as a teacher but in I Am A Teacher, we really take that away from her and we go deep into who she is as a person. Yeah, sorry, you must be hungry. I'll make you a quick lunch. So she goes through all kinds of problems that anyone would in life, financial issues, family issues and also issues with her own pride, right? She faces so many struggles because she's handed so many opportunities and shortcuts throughout this entire short film but she chooses to take in none of them and that's a very big part of who Madame Su Bing really is, just a very righteous person. So despite having comedic origins, Madame Subbing's backstory is rather gloomy. Her ex-husband wants to sell the house, he wants to take the daughter away, and she's having financial difficulties. Hence, what we as the audience discovers, along with the character herself, is the realisation that the important thing in her life is her relationship with her daughter and the extent she would go to fight for it. The fact that Madame Subbing is no longer working in the Titan Academy means that we have a little bit more space to explore what she's doing outside of the current story that we are simultaneously telling and we are able to find out more about her background and her story. I think with our other characters, we are able to develop their story in a more comedic way. But because Madame Subbing has a darker story, we are able to take on a more serious approach and a different format for this. So Madame Subbing is Vicky's mother. Um, she's a very strong and independent person, which can be quite overwhelming for Vicky. So as a result, Vicky feels very disconnected from her mother and becomes very rebellious. Amanda and I have known each other for almost 10 years now. So we are very close to each other and we know um, each other's patterns. So um, she knows how I direct, I know how she acts. Just make sure she's back by 9.30. Of course. Okay, not, not so loud. But Amanda has been a joy to work with and she really, truly understands the character of Madame Subbing. This character that I've written, she has made it herself. The funny thing is, when we came up with this character, Madame Soup Bing, we thought about what could be the most annoying auntie that we could think of in a Chinese New Year situation. That is why we actually named Madame Soup Bing Auntie Soup Bing. And we actually have a nod of that um, when Louis calls her Auntie Soup Bing. Thank you, Auntie. Auntie? When I first heard that I had to play this annoying auntie called Auntie Soot Bing. I mean, now better known as Madam Soot Bing. I was like, I am nothing like this in real life. So I actually draw a lot of inspiration from my own mother. And Jianhao sometimes jokingly say that she's the original Madam Soot Bing. And I have to say, I can't really disagree because she has her Madam Soot Bing moments. My mom actually passes me her own clothes and she was like, do you need this? You can dress like that when you play Madame Soup Bing. And she'll bring up another set. Do you need this? And so most of the wardrobe we see actually comes from my mother and her old clothes. She really helps me in portraying Madame Soup Bing. And when she sees me rehearse my lines at home, she actually tells me, no, I don't say it this way. I actually say it like this. You have to go like that and like that. And I'm like, okay. Duly noted. <laughs> so James is Madame Soot Bing's husband, well, ex-husband. And this is actually the first time we see him in this universe. And we get to understand his true intentions, which is to sell away his house and Madame Soot Bing's house so that he can move overseas. And that means he also wants to take Vicky away from Madame Soot Bing, which puts her really in a very vulnerable position where she has to get out of her comfort zone and fight for what's hers. Soot Bing's husband was always a mystery to us. We've never had anyone play that character before. So when we were casting for someone, um, I wanted someone that looked very nice on the outside because, well, Soot Bang did marry him. But then on the inside could be a little bit more evil, a little bit more mean. And when Keith came in, he looked so kind and nice. But then when he started reading for the role, it was like, bam, that, that's the guy that we need. Wouldn't prioritize anything over my daughter. Isn't that right, Vicky? 
Really? Was daughter the first person that you were thinking about when you decided to run out with another woman? Calm down, Subing. He's kind of entitled because he feels that he can do whatever he wants with money, which includes taking away the house and Vicky away from Madam Sukbing. So there comes a point where James actually gives Madam Sukbing a cheque which pretty much symbolises a shortcut or a choice that Madam Sukbing decides not to take and um, she decides to just fight and get out of her comfort zone. He's disrespectful, he's demeaning and on top of it all, he cares for no one else but himself. So throughout the short film, Vicky goes through a realisation of how she sees her father. So at the beginning, uh, Vicky thinks that he is this very like wonderful man who does everything to support her and even wants to bring her all the way to China to work with him. But then as the story progresses, we start to realise that he's not actually the man that he says he is. He's not the man that he appears to be. And actually, Soup Bang, Vicky's mother, is the one who has been there for her the entire time. Not Come now, back. Vicky. Now's not the time. So Alex plays Adam who happens to be the owner of the restaurant that Madam Soup Bing applies for a job. And at the start, he's a little bit reluctant to offer Madam Soup Bing this job. However, um, because she's so genuine, he decides to give her the contract. And as the story progresses, Madam Soup Bing and Adam actually um, develop quite a strong friendship. Adam is Madam Sutbeng's new boss. He is open-minded, he's kind, he's warm, and he's so generous in contrast to Madam Sutbeng's ex-husband, James. And to me, at least, he's sort of a hero to Madam Sutbeng when she was at her lowest point. Take the job, Sutbeng. You deserve it. You were made for this. So Alex also happens to be a close friend. In fact, my best man at the wedding. So um, it was really interesting and it, it, it made me very happy to be able to work with him. So when I wrote this character, his intentions and his lines, I actually had Alex in mind when I wrote everything. And the crazy thing is that I did not expect to cast him, but somewhere along the way, we just decided to ask, hey, you want to try this out? And wow, he really delivered. Working with Alex was quite an experience because Tianhao wrote the part based on Alex. So for him to come in so willingly to act out the character and did so well throughout the entire filming process was quite a sight to see. He himself has a very kind-hearted nature and he's very smiley and very positive so it really reflects in the character that he played. Aiden is a little boy who happens to study at the restaurant after school and happens to cross paths with Madam Soup Bing who with her teacher instincts decide to take a break from her waitress job and start helping Aiden with his homework. So Aiden is played by Lewis, who we have quite a strong history with together if you've seen our previous videos and the story with Lewis. And um, just, it was such a pleasure working with him. We met Lewis when he was just a fan and he was sort of struggling with his health and we wanted to bring some positivity to his life. So Tianhao and the team actually went down to visit him one day and started playing games with him and he started getting a lot better and we are so happy to see him as a healthy boy that he is now. Louis really put in a lot of effort to rehearse his lines. He was repeating it while on set and I was going through with him and he looked so happy the minute he came on set. And when we first saw him, we were like, oh my goodness, he's so tall now. He really grew from the first time we saw him and he did so well acting the part, remembering his lines, which was honestly quite a lot. So I'm very proud of him and what he has done for I Am A Teacher. My name is Hakim and I'm the cinematographer and also the editor for I Am A Teacher. I've been working with Jen Hao for about four and a half years now and I'm the man behind the camera and also the editor for the Titan Academy videos. So having worked with Jen Hao for about a couple of years now, we sort of understand how each other work and we have this synergy going on. But going on to this short film, there are some things that we did differently. So with this short film, I worked very, very closely with Jen Hao on the shots that we wanted. So working on the comedy videos, Jen Hao is mostly in front of the camera. So with that, he has to work a lot more with the talents on the delivery of their lines. So for the short film, it was more of a collaborative effort because Jen Hao is very insistent in his shot while I have my own ideas. So what we do is that we would just shoot multiple shots of the scene. And then once we're done with that, we just bring it to the editing room. And then from there, we would just see which is best for us. 
So when I first joined a company, I've always wanted to shoot and edit a short film. So being able to finally shoot a short film, I was very emotionally invested in this short film. So when I first casted Vicky in the Titan Academy series, she was really quiet and as somebody new um, to our Titan fam, she was very shy. We just tell her not to say anything <laughs> or we just tell her, okay, this is your line, um, say it with a monotone. But this time, we were really, really trying to bring out the emotions out of her. So I think um, it really was a challenge for her and I'm really proud that um, she has delivered such a performance. Working with Vicky was really fun because we are so familiar with each other and we already know this relationship between Vicky and Madam Subbing but I am a teacher really went in depth to show the struggles between a mother and daughter, the push and the pull and I think every mother and daughter will be able to relate with the both of them, myself included. In this short film, it was quite a challenge for me because I'm doing something completely different which displays more emotion, more lines. I wouldn't say I'm totally the same in real life. To the people I'm closer with, I can be myself and talk more and be more outgoing. I would say I'm more nervous um, working with the new cast because I, I don't know them, so I don't know how I'll react to their roles and how they would respond. Working with the usual cast, like T1, T5, um, are much more comfortable. As I was reading through the script for I Am A Teacher, I was looking at the different roles that we had to cast for and I was like, wait, James has a girlfriend, the husband has another girlfriend. So we needed to find someone who could embody the role of being very flirtatious, a little bit more frivolous, someone who likes materialistic things, a little bit more on the you know fun-loving side. But at the same time, Millie is also a very likeable character because at the end we find out that James not only has Millie, he has another girlfriend. So we needed Millie to kind of be like the victim in the situation as well. Like as much as she wanted to move to China with him and was involved in all this materialistic stuff that she wanted, she was also hurt in the end. So, justice for Millie. Let us know if you want like a short film with Millie. <laughs>
we won't have to cut. We continued the scene and it ended up being a really, really good and really, really strong take. And I think we did a very good job considering that her face became really <laughs> red after I slapped her. And I'm just really, really sorry. Just guys, just know that I have no hard feelings towards Vicky. I did not enjoy slapping her. And it's really just for the film. Vicky was a real champ to take that slap from me so willingly because she was like, it's okay, it's okay. Just, just let me, it's fine. Just one time can already. <laughs> Oops. So usually for the normal Titan Academy episodes, the 15 minutes episodes that you see, we would finish filming it in the course of a day. Yeah. But for the short film, we actually spent five days and three days of reshoot. And that five days was during the span of Chinese New Year. That didn't cross our mind yeah. because we're doing weekly videos and we are in the flow of doing these weekly videos. Usually we would cram up all the content into one day. Yeah. But for this, spread it. we spread it out, um, we spent a bit of time, well quite a lot of time, yeah. planning the shots and often when it was not perfect to us, we would go back to reshoot it and that's why we had another day of reshoot. Three days of reshoots. So after we were done shooting for the short film, we were told that I had to reshoot the slap scene on another day and I just sent Amanda a bunch of crying emojis on WhatsApp. Yeah, like... We actually spent a day uh, reshooting the slap scene and initially it was a five minute long take with Amanda and Vicky performing the whole scene. We thought of doing an awkward take, an awkward long take to emphasize on how uncomfortable it was feeling, but we realised after looking at it in the editing suite, we realised that um, we could have used more angles to accentuate the character's emotion. So we had a reshoot and we had to, Amanda had to slap Vicky a few more times. But it gave us a good opportunity to bring the lighting to a more gloomy atmosphere and also uh, we broke the 180 degree rule. Yeah. Not even my teacher anymore! <laughs> Vicky. Vicky. Which I didn't like at the start. He didn't like it because usually for our uh, comedic episodes, we go quite by the book. We, yeah. are, we, we follow the rules. So when I first told him, let's break the rule, he was, he was quite shocked because every single time when I see uh, any of our crew, in fact, break the rule. Yeah. We, we, it's it's a it's a no no for us. Yeah. So when I when I first said that, um, he didn't quite like it, yeah. but it sort of symbolised the fragmented relationship between Madame Subbing and Vicky, and I felt it looked beautifully uncomfortable. Uh, amazing! It's amazing. It, it, yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> yes. So regarding the bus. Um, when we finish editing, yeah. we actually realised that rather than just having a, a, a normal transition, it would be nice to see Madame Subbing at the bus stop because it shows that she's just like every normal person. Yeah. So we went on to Google Earth yeah. and searched for the best looking bus stop. So we, we visited quite a lot of bus stops on Google Earth and I think we found the perfect one. Initially, we were just supposed to have one, yes, but one. after he put that into the whole um, short film and I looked at it, I was like, you know what, we need another one. The tough thing is because I know they were under the sun, it's, it's not a bus stop with shade. There were a lot of people at a bus stop, like every single minute you'll see people at a bus stop, so it was very tough to get that 10 seconds of no one at the bus stop. And she was directly under the hot sun and I felt bad, I felt bad, but, but, but it was worth it. it yeah, was worth it. yeah, it was. It was, it was worth it. It. So in terms of set design, what we actually did was that we hid Easter eggs in different rooms and in different scenes of the short film. So in the house, we have uh, T1, T5 textbooks. We have Titan Academy new merch. We have um, Suit Bank's infamous megaphone. So we have lots of little things within it if you can like find out what they all are. Also for costume, it was quite difficult because Suit Bank has this very standard style and in a lot of the normal YouTube videos that we do, she wears the same thing, or like the same three outfits repeated 
through all the videos. But for this one, we had many different days of suit bank. So Amanda really had to go through her mother's wardrobe to like find all the clothing, which was very, very difficult. We also had to match one of the outfits to suit bank's last appearance in Titan Academy when she got fired. Well, for the editing process and the workflow, um, it was easier. Yeah. Definitely easier, I would say. Definitely yeah. easier. And that actually took us by surprise. Yeah. Because we are so used to working with multiple layers. A lot of clips for yes. that usual 12 to 15 minute yeah. episode that you guys see. Types of students. That is really difficult. Yeah. And plus, we have a lot of sound effects, a lot of music. This one was a little bit different. Yeah, in like one and a half days, I was done with the whole entire structure of the short film. Yeah, which 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 I would take at least two or three days for like a uh, fifteen minutes uh, Titan Academy series. The interesting thing about this project is that Daniel Verapan he composed the music the whole thing. Yeah. So none of this music was royalty free or licensed music. Yeah. This was film score that was composed just for I am a teacher. Well, I've known of Daniel Verapan for quite a while. Um, he's a sound designer and the music of the whole short film is done by himself and uh, the Roma Productions where they would do the sound design, the folly and basically beautify our audio, yeah. I would say. Yeah. When we put the ending together, we actually used the soundtrack from The Dark Knight. Yes, Christopher and, Nolan's. Yep. And I sent it to uh, Daniel Verapan and he told me, okay, maybe that is a little bit dramatic and I agree. So I said, maybe something more hopeful, something more inspiring. Yeah. And I did not need to give him any more instructions and he came up with this beautiful piece of composition and when I put it into the uh, film, I told Hakim, I said, even if everything else is bad, the ending makes up for it. Hi, my name is Daniel Verpen. I'm a music producer and film scorer for I Am A Teacher. When writing the music for I Am A Teacher, it was really important for us to capture everything that was going on through the film. All the ups, highs and lows as well as all these sad and happy bits. But more importantly, it was really uh, crucial that we showcase the softer side, the more hopeful side of Madame Sud Bing because, you know, she's known for being a hard person. She's also a normal human being with you know, love for her daughter, love for um, her passion as a teacher, and she really has dreams. And it was really important for us to actually reflect all of that through music. When writing music for film, it's really important to uh, guide your audience through recurring themes much earlier, even before the scene actually even arrives. So one of my favorite scenes to score besides the uh, end credit scene was the scene where Madame Subang smacks Vicky. Uh, we actually wrote a theme and introduced it much early on into the film and so when you listen to it and as you go through the film, it keeps on building, it keeps on building, it keeps on growing and growing with the character, with the story. So by the time you actually get to the scene where Madame Sud Bing smacks Vicky, it's all finally let out through emotion, through heavy music, through great acting. It was a real fantastic scene to score. Working with Jan Hao and team has been a real joy. It's really important for directors and composers to be in sync with one another. And I truly appreciate them trusting us with their vision and looking forward to see what Titan Studio comes up with next. So after editing everything, we didn't let anybody yeah. in the company watch the short film because we wanted everyone to watch it together yeah. and have a lovely surprise. We managed to have a day where we showed the short film to the rest of the team, the team together and I think it was quite satisfying. Yeah, it was a very it was a very heartfelt moment for me. Yeah. That like finally everyone gets to see it at the same time. I think that's the best feeling ever. We we had that one joke. I'll get a part time job even if I have to. Just focus on your studies. Because I, I really refrained myself from writing in any jokes. <laughs> I said, uh, I'm, I'm going to take a very serious approach yeah. to this short film and um, it's going to be completely different. But I, I really couldn't resist to add one small touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and initially, um, Daniel composed the music over it and I had, to, I had to convince him, please just let me 
let me stop the music there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we did. We were watching at the back, and yeah. I was just waiting. And when everyone laughed, I was like, "Yes, it worked." Yeah. yeah. Amazing. <laughs> one joke. I only wrote in one joke. Working with Jian Hao has always been fun, and it will always be fun. But for this, we really took a very serious approach, and we really tried very hard to steer away from jokes and really go into deeper meaning with this entire story. And to see him work is really just a sight because you see the way he thinks and the way he focuses and how he channels and makes sure everything flows together to make like the script come alive. And on set, he's so focused about every small little detail and I'm just always constantly in awe of the way he works and I will always be proud of him as a friend. So for I Am A Teacher, I did consider an ending where Madam Soup Bing ends up back in the academy. I decided to go with the tuition centre instead because I think it not only completes her redemption but it sort of elevates her and I think that's rather empowering. Um, the film starts with her wanting to be a teacher and it ends up with her being more than just a teacher. She is a mother and that is really more of what the focus of the story is. In its essence, the story is about a mother. It's about someone who keeps trying and doesn't give up. And I think there's a Madam Subbing in all of us, someone who doesn't take the easy way out because she's proud of her identity and of who she really is. Coming into this entire project, I think the vision originally was to showcase a different side of Madam Subbing's life something that's a bit more emotional as compared to what we normally do. At the end of the day, to us it's very important to be able to send this message out that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Anybody can be struggling just because they appear very happy and positive and strong on the outside does not mean that they are really feeling that on the inside. And we hope with that, that everyone has a little bit more compassion to one another. So I hope everybody will appreciate their teacher after watching this because we often underestimate how difficult a teacher's job is and we almost never care about what they are going through and it's almost as if the only thing we know about them is that they are people who give us homework, which is clearly not the case. I Am A Teacher is dedicated to all the teachers all the mothers and parents out there, especially the single ones, who know how it is to love, sacrifice, and go through struggles without anybody understanding them. A relationship between a parent and child isn't the most straightforward one, and it's not about being right or wrong. Take away ego, pride, and you'll realize that there are a lot more important things than that.